Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all had a lovely festive season. And today I thought I would read a wee story about the festive season and what probably happened in some of your houses. It's called Christmas is not for adults. So, they say that Christmas is for children and they're right because it should as hell isn't for adults. I'm the type of person who would say I love Christmas because on the face of it I do. All the things associated with Christmas I absolutely adore. Carol singing, mulled wine, winter hats, log fires, fairy lights, festive films and family time. It's a time of year when it's perfectly acceptable to exist on a diet of quality street and Baileys. Seriously, what's not to like? I'll tell you what the problem is. I now have any time to enjoy any of those things because all the pleasure is sucked out of Christmas by the huge amount of festive admin. My to-do list, which is horrific at the best of time, now goes into total overdrive and I struggle to stay afloat. To do. Go to school Christmas concert. Go to school Christmas fair. Go to school Christmas play. Decide to live at school because it's easier. Realise can't actually attend school Christmas play because working. Explain to small child that mummy can't attend first Christmas school play because of being a career obsessed bitch. Fry a bit. Buy a tub of Quality Street. Eat Quality Street while doing more, more crying. Organise Father Christmas visit. Choose school Christmas dinner options. Force children to write 30 pointless Christmas cards so we don't lose face. Buy jumper for school Christmas jumper day. Buy mince pies for various festive events. Buy own mince pies back at the festive events. Wonder why I even meet mince pies when I don't really like them. Buy teachers a large bottle of gin. Buy own self a large bottle of gin. Buy all the things. Sponsor all the things. Bring in pound coins and rab <laughs> randomly lob them around the playground whilst, ang <laughs> whilst angrily singing It's the most wonderful time of the year. Something about a Jesus fancy dress competition, or was that a hallucination? Bring in eyeballs and skewers for the PTA Christmas raffle. Donate kidney for school Christmas hamper. Remember to go to various friends' school work fun festive socials. Remember to be a fun festive person at fun festive socials. Do all the Christmas shopping. Do everything else as well. By the time we actually limp towards the finish line that is Christmas Eve, I'm absolutely exhausted. The fantasy of sitting on the sofa watching a lovely Christmas movie with yummy M&S oven snacks goes out of the window as I've never managed to get my wrapping done on time. I finally stumble into bed in the early hours, only just remembering to not Rudolph's carrot and hag a sl hag -a? have a slug of Father Christmas's G&T. Actually, to be fair, that's normally go long gone. I feel I could sleep for days, which is unfortunate, as this is basically how Christmas pans out. 3 to 5 a.m. Children come into the room every 30 minutes asking, Has he been? 5.05 a.m. Get up after approximately three hours of broken sleep and try to concentrate really hard on not being sick due to tiredness. Unfortunately, it's not possible to adopt the usual technique of putting cartoons on ignoring and ignoring the kids because Christmas guilt requires that you be a willing participant in stocking opening. 6.15am. Stuff face with handfuls of chocolate coins for energy. 6.30am. Caffeination. I don't know if it's a word, but it should be. 7am onwards. Continue stuffing face with chocolate coins and downing coffee until someone, not me because Daily Mail readers already think I'm an offensive alcoholic, suggests it would be a good idea to crack open the Bucks Fizz. 10am. Family arrive and assemble for official present opening. Brace self, cross fingers and come armed with screwdriver and batteries. 10.30am. Hunt for survivors in the wreckage. 11am. Lunch prep. I'm the sous chef in our house and I take that role very seriously. 12.30pm. Some people go to the pub for a pint. Try and be in that group. The sous chef in particular could do with a break. 2pm. Lunch is ready. 2.02pm. Everyone sits down to enjoy a large leisurely feast. 2.04pm. The children have finished eating. 2.06pm. The children are fighting. 2.46pm. The children are still fighting. 3pm. Right, that's it. I get that Christmas is for kids, but they've had their fun. It was magical and all, but the magic is now looking a bit thin on the ground. Come to think of it, the magic as well and truly left the fucking building. There's only one thing for it. 
chuck gold coins at the small people and insist they keep at least one metre away from all adult humans. 4pm. Yay, cocktail time. Make each round with decreasing skill and increasing alcohol. 5pm. Your intellectual level has now been reduced <laughs> to that of a five-year-old. Adults are boring. Hang out with the kids again. 8pm. Try and wrestle the small people into bed, then watch depressing soaps, put the world to rights, argue about politics, eat oven snacks, and do some angry wandy <laughs> washing up and wander around carrying a pyramid of Ferrero Rocher while encouraging guests to role-play the ambassador's reception. Note, if they refuse, they should not be invited to your home again. 11.37pm. Fall in f asleep in front of the TV with a breaded mozzarella stick stuck to your face and your hand submerged in a tin of Quality Street. You is beautiful. You is amazing. You is the winner of Christmas. Now, in contrast, the period between Boxing Day and New Year's Eve is much better. I never understand people who take their trees down on Boxing Day as that when the fun really starts for me. It's the point when I begin to relax and enjoy myself because it becomes perfectly acceptable to sit about looking tired and unenthusiastic while shoveling huge amounts of food into your face and no one really judges you for it. The rules, etiquette, diets that we adhere to in normal life no longer apply. Everyone just kind of does whatever the hell they like for a few days, meandering from fridge to sofa to pub and so on, whilst feeling confused. No wonder they call it crimble limbo. Unlike Roy Wood, I don't wish it could be Christmas every day, but I wouldn't mind being stuck in some sort of groundhog crimble limbo loop. By the time it gets to January, normal life must resume again, and it's always terribly sad and hard to accept. January absolutely sucks arse, because all anyone can talk about is their fucking diet, detox, no booze plans, which is extra super bad if your birthday's in January like mine. Mine too. I'm not sure what's worse, the fact that everyone's gone all clean living, or the fact that they won't stop banging on about it. I personally think it's the latter. Each to their own and all that. But if you get sick of people asking if you're doing dry January, then please feel free to cut this out and stick it on your forehead. Just remember to get it laminated first, as it'll inevitably be pissing down, snowing, hailing out there. The end. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and press the wee bell notification. And a huge big thank you to all my subscribers, patrons and members. See you next week. Bye bye.